Okay, so in the previous tutorial, we added some furniture to Bob's room, and we manipulated the collision mask so that we could add some uh, practical functionality to it as well, right? So that we can actually go inside the desk here where it's walkable, um, but yet be, stop him from being able to go through the desk here. But this is still pretty boring, right? Bob can't really interact with anything. So let's make it so that he can actually interact with his sort of desk here and the, the item maybe even that's on it. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to actually build a new layer. So layers, um, you can kind of think of them as almost um, transparent sheets that you put on top of each other, right? So right now we only have one base layer here. Let's bring up our layers window and you'll see we've got only the one base layer that's visible. And if we make that layer invisible, it removes everything from our screen. Let's add a layer, and let's call this layer a dialogue layer. All right, and right now, because uh, there's nothing in our dialogue layer, uh, there's nothing to show up or, or, uh, or hide. Let's change that. So in Paint 3D, I just created this little 400 by 200 pixel uh, dialogue container. Right, just a rectangle with a frame, that's it. And that's going to hold some text for us eventually. Let's go ahead and add that. Add a sprite, new object, and we're going to call this dialog container. And let's add the dialog container to our objects list. Sprites, I have this under menus. and let's hit apply. We'll add our dialog container to the screen and show it, sort of put it where we'd like it to, to show up. Let's see how that looks. That probably looks pretty good. Always keep in mind where your um, object, your main object character is going to be. You want this to be conveniently located for people to read. That looks pretty good. We'll leave it there for right now. Right now, the dialog container was, was added to our uh, base layer. So let me bring that layers menu up again. You'll see we've got the two layers, the base layer and the dialog layer. We have to tell GDevelop to add this dialog container to the dialog layer. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So I've clicked on it, and now I'm going to hit my open properties panel. And you see how it added it to the base layer? Let's change that. Let's put it to the dialog layer. Now watch what happens. When we go back to our layers, we have them both visible. If we click to make the dialog layer invisible, it's gone. And that's sort of where we want that to stay most of the time, unless we interact with something. So let's bring it up through interaction here. So let's go to our Bob and his furniture section. And right now, the only thing we have is when Bob is in collision with the desk, we want to separate those two objects. If we try to add a condition directly to this, it will try to mash everything together as one execution. Um, and we don't actually want that to happen. We want this to execute still by itself. And, and we want to instead add a sub event to it. So in other words, the program is going to say, Bob is in collision with desk, let's still keep them away. But if Bob is in collision with desk, let's also do this separate procedure as well, as opposed to trying to make these work at the same time. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the condition under advanced and and we're going to say, if Bob is in collision with the desk, do this and if Bob is in collision with the desk, and let's add a keyboard. We'll do key released because we don't want to hold the button down. And let's do the space bar. So if Bob is in collision with the desk and the space key is released, we want to show that dialog layer. Show a layer, we'll choose dialog. OK, 
Okay, let's see what happens. There it is. Now, it'd be pretty annoying if it just stayed there the whole time, so we also have to tell the program when to get rid of it. So let's let's copy this and let's add a new a new main um, empty event. We'll paste it in. Oh, didn't like it. And we want to invert this, of course, right? So that if Bob is not in collision with the desk. But it's not just there. This is where we've got to think a little bit, right? It's not just that if Bob is not in collision with the desk, we get rid of everything, right? It's, it's if Bob is in not in collision with the desk and we want to test to see if the layer is visible. So it, we, we want to start thinking about managing how many executions we have um, going at the same time, right? If this, is, this dialog box is not visible, we don't want it to do anything, really. But if it is visible here, if it's visible and all of this is true, then we want to hide the layer dialog. So the way this is all, again, this is the difference between executing as one action versus executing one action here and then adding the sub event. It's as if you're saying, do this first, let's check this out, and then let's do this, as opposed to let's check all of this at the same time. We want to check all of this at the same time here, right? Because we want it to check, make sure it's not in collision with the desk. And the, the uh, dialog layer is uh, visible. We want to make it invisible. So let's see how we did. So we'll click the space bar now. There it is. Now if I move away from it, it should go away. There it is. All right. So that's how we start sort of our interaction process. In the next tutorial, we'll actually start adding some text through variables um, and see if we can uh, get our characters to, to interact a little bit more.